Part 1 of this tutorial showed you how to create a simple MVC application containing the view framework in a cleaned up MVC project. In part 2 we will create a view object, an HTML template for that view object and a view component that will be used inside this view application. As a reminder, this tutorial is not going to emphasize on how Vue works, but it will explain how to use Vue within Visual Studio without the drawbacks and stuffiness of using Webpack. In order to do that, we need to create a little Vue application first. Open the index page for the Vise Home folder. Between a script tag, let's create a new Vue object and assign it to a JavaScript variable named MainView. This object will have at a minimum a property named L, which will indicate to view the ID of the HTML element in the template that will be handled by Vue. This element will have the value hash view app. Now, let's create a view template. This usually is contained within a regular div tag, having the specified ID, in this case the ID is view app. So view will be able to handle everything that will be inside the div that has the ID view app. The rule is that the template has to be declared before the view object gets instantiated, so let's add the template before the script tag. For our example, let's add an input tag and AP tag to show the content of that input. In order to make the P automatically show the value entered by the user into the input tag, we need a common place to keep the data. This will be kept inside the view object by creating a new element named data which contains a JSON object. The JSON object declared within the view data property will have for now one property and let's name it first name. In the template area, please notice that the input tag has a v model instead of the property value. This property will point to the property first name from within the view object. This is a two-way binding, so if the user modifies the text inside the input tag, it will automatically update first name inside the data. Consequently, if the first name property inside the data gets modified, the input tag will show the new data. Inside the p tag, let's add the first name between double curly brackets. This is a one-way binding and that means, if the first name property inside the data gets changed, that will be shown automatically inside that p tag. This is a one-way binding and that means, if the first name property inside the data gets changed, that will be shown automatically inside that p tag. Now, let's run the application to see how it works. Notice how when the input tag text gets changed by the user, the p tag will automatically show the changed text. Please stop the application and let's go back to the index page. Now that we have a working view application, let's create a view component that can be used inside the view object. At the beginning of the index page, let's add the new component that will simply show the word test. We want to show inside that component something else than just a static text, so let's introduce props. Add props property of type array to the component and add a first element in that array named foo. Use foo inside a span tag inside the component's template. Before running the application, let's modify the main view object's template to show the difference between the span inside the main template and the span inside the component. Now let's run again the app and see how everything works. Modify the text inside the input tag and you'll see that the text inside the component will automatically get modified. Now that we have a view application with a component, the next part will show you how to do separation of concerns again without using the webpack complexity.